But no, I don't want you to feel like I'm complaining because I definitely am not complaining. Hey guys, today's video is just going to be me sitting here and talking with you, giving you an update on how I'm feeling. Um, it has been four weeks since my spine surgery. Uh, as we know, as you guys know, if you've been here, it I had a discectomy and decompression. That's what it's called. I cannot say the word discectomy properly, probably. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's what I had done in my L5-S1 area. <laughs> I have about a one and a half inch scar. And I have told y'all about how I was feeling every week, but I kind of want to go a little bit more in depth today of how I'm feeling, things I'm thinking, and um, a little bit of something that's bothering me that I have to battle with every day. So, to get started, I will just talk about that because that's the bad part. It's been four weeks. Okay, first of all, let me say this. This is my second spine surgery. My first one, This is that's what this scar is from. I had a fusion, or actually it was two fusions with bone spurs removed and something else done too. But anyway, I can't remember exactly the terminology right now. But I had that done back in 2014, I want to say it was. Um course it is a different part of the spine it's the cervical spine not the lumbar spine it was a more invasive surgery it involved hardware afterwards which I still have why are you not focusing what is happening camera <laughs> it doesn't like me today um, it involved a lot more than the one that I'm, I had done four weeks ago. It involved, um, it was it was just a lot more invasive. The scar's larger, the actual technique they used it was bigger and a lot more. But at this point, from what I can remember, I wasn't having some of the thoughts I'm having now. And I'll tell you why. Um, I'm still hurting this time. It's a different type of pain than I was having before. I'm not having the numbness that I was having before, but I'm still hurting and that bothers me because of course you read things and things like that um but this is going by my doctor my neurosurgeon that's what i'm going to talk to you about what he said you know he said that it could take up to nine months which some things i've read says a year but it could take up to nine months for that nerve, which is one of the largest in your body. The sciatic is as big as your thumb, pretty much. And um, pretty big nerve to have to heal. But it could take up to nine months for the pain to subside completely. And it may not, ever. I may still have pain forever. And it... And has me, like, there's there are times, and I'm pretty sure this is normal. Um, there are times when I'll have the thought, did I re-injure it? Did I do something wrong when I was sleeping? Did I twist while I was sleeping? Are the times when I wasn't thinking and I squatted, or, which squatting I can do, but... Did I, did I do something to re-injure it and make it herniate again? Because there is that possibility. 
and it is a bigger possibility the first eight weeks after surgery that thought keeps running through my mind knowing full well that it may take let's just say a year for it to completely heal and the pain go away I cannot stop I mean it's like that that thought I cannot conquer it it keeps coming back every day I don't know if it's because it's only been four weeks or if it's because the pain is still there and the pain is pretty bad I have weaned myself off of the medication I told you guys about that I did that before I went back to my doctor two weeks ago um, and I know one of you at least one said do not get rid of the medication yet that I might need it down the road um, I know when I was taking the medication I was not hurting as bad as I do now but I haven't talked about this because it wasn't an issue why do you keep not focusing focus okay um, it wasn't really an issue until the last week or so but it's messing with my sleep bad it's like I cannot stay comfortable I cannot like it's it's messing with my sleep to the point that it was before I ever got any medication for it before I went you know before um, my doctor finally found out what was wrong once my doctor found out that it was a herniated disc he gave me pain medication which um, no I had the pain medication but he gave me a no I had muscle relaxers but he gave me pain medication as well I think that's what it was I think that's the way it worked I can't remember anymore it's been months that I've been dealing with this y'all know that it's been what six or eight months now that my life has been totally flipped and the time when I really need my back to be okay and and want it to be okay it's not but I'm still having pain and it is affecting my sleep and I'm gonna talk to Jeff about this today I'm thinking about possibly starting to take the muscle relaxer again because that helped me sleep before but I don't want to depend on muscle relaxers to be able to rest so I thought about doing that for a couple days see if it helps if it doesn't help call my doctor but then again I may just call my doctor <laughs> and by the time that you see this I'll have already done something um, most likely because I'm gonna to talk to Jeff about it sorry I yawned which is something I do a lot um so that's one part that's that's a bad thing you know I guess that's bothering me this pain is just something that I didn't expect it to be as bad because after my first surgery which was a lot more invasive a lot more detailed a lot more it was a lot scarier because I could have been paralyzed after you know because it was my spinal cord is you know involved um I wasn't in the pain I'm in now I was better I was still hurting but not to the degree I am now so it's and I know it's a total different part of the body I know that and I know every surgery is different I know that I know all the logical things but somehow I expected for it to be a much lower degree of pain than what it is and some days it's like just to this to the point where it was before um, almost I mean it has not been to the point where I was crying but let's just say on the scale of the 1 to 10 like the doctors give you it's been like a 4 or 5 sometimes and that's usually in the evenings when I need to go to get to the point where I can rest um, so I want to talk to you about that part also I'm fighting mental battles with Jeff having to come home and do my chores it bothers me so much and it shouldn't 
it doesn't bother him. It shouldn't bother me because whenever he has had surgery, I did his chores. Um, so it shouldn't bother me, but I guess because I'm the homemaker, the mama, the caretaker, the whatever, it's getting to me that I can't take care of anybody. You know, I can't, I can't take care of anybody. And Jeff just keeps telling me, well, you take care of yourself. You take care of yourself. Why are you doing this camera? What is happening? I don't understand. Um, <laughs> focus. But, um, he says, take care of yourself. Don't worry about anybody else, you know. And he's right. And mentally, I know all this, but somehow my emotions are, emotions are a little bit wacko. And I, maybe because of female reasons, ladies, you probably get my idea, my, you know, this past week. Female reasons might be part of it. Um, I am thinking a little bit more logically now. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying. Maybe. But <laughs> anyway, um, it could be that, hormonal things. It could be just because it's been four weeks since I was able to do my things. And I don't want to use the word pride because that I, I wasn't prideful about it in a way that's bad, but I was, I took pride in taking care of my family. I was, like, taking care of my family was my thing. That's, that's, that's my job as a wife and mother. And it's the way I show love, if that makes sense. Now, it's not the only way I show love, but it is a one way. So, mentally, this is getting to me. What? This camera's getting to me. Let me be right back to try to... Oh, uh, y'all still can't even see me. What's happening? Okay, so I changed the setting. I don't know if it's going to work. But, um, not that I'm complaining. I'm definitely not. I should be enjoying the time off, so to speak. And I am. I'm fine with, you know, just being able to do a little bit. Like last night, Jeff was folding clothes at the table. And I folded with him. So it's not like I'm not doing anything. I can wipe down the bathroom sink or the kitchen counters. Like I can't stretch to get the back of the counters and do the deep clean. You know, whenever I take everything off. I can't do that. But I can clean the counter like when I'm cooking. Um, I can do the things. I can cook. I can, but it's hard for me to ask for help on a normal basis. <laughs> and with it being abnormal, this is it's gotten to me, so I've had to pray a lot more. Um, I've talked to Jeff about it, and he just says, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. It's like, not that I'm nagging, complaining, or fussing, or, you know, anything like that. It's just these are things that are bothering me, so I wanted to tell you guys, just in case you ever go through it. Um... They bother me, but they don't, like, get me down or anything. But they are things that are happening. So, that's why I'm telling you guys, really, is because these are things that are happening. And I always talk to you guys about all kinds of things. So, why not tell you about this? This is my experience, and now I'm fuzzy again. I don't understand it. I changed settings. I don't know. But, um... So, those are, like, the things... Two of the things that are bothering me. Another thing that's bothering me is there's a super itchy spot on the scar. And I have to fight all day long not to scratch. Because you know when there's an itch you want to scratch. And um, I don't want to scratch it because I don't know, you know, I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to cause problems. But Jeff looked at it and he says it looks like what an ant bite would look like without the little... We call, around here, I don't know what everybody else calls it. We call it the head on it. It doesn't have that part. So I'm wondering if it's a stitch. Because you know whenever stitches dissolve, some of it works its way out. You know, and that happens sometimes. I'm wondering if, it, if that's it. Because it's at the very bottom of it. And it's so irritating. Just something to let you know might happen if you have this surgery. It's so irritating. Um, and I have found no relief for it. I have put my oil on it. I have washed it. 
<laughs> I can't do anything. I, I haven't tried lotion. Jeff told me it did look a little bit dry, but that's why I put my oil on it. I'll show y'all the stuff I'm using for my scar. It's this right here. It's the Moderma Quick Dry Oil. Can you focus on that? No? You don't like it either? There we go. It's the Quick Dry Oil. It really doesn't have a scent. It's got a little bit of a scent, but not much of one. It says a unique blend of botanical extracts to help visibly reduce the appearance of stretch marks, scars, uneven skin tone, and dry skin. So, um... It's got sweet almond, rose hip, and sunflower oil, sunflower oils to nourish and moisturize. I cannot talk ever. Y'all know that. Uh, botanical extracts plus sepalin to improve the appearance of skin. It's supposed to be paraben and fragrance free, but there's still a smell. You know everything, even though it's fragrance free, it's still got a smell. At least to me, it does. I can smell stuff that other people say don't doesn't have a smell. But it doesn't smell bad. It's not repulsive or anything. And even if it was on my lower back, I probably would never smell it. But it does get on my hand. But anyway, I've been using it. It looks like none of it's gone, though. Because you usually have to use a tiny bit of this stuff. And it's, it's going to last for years. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but those are some things that are like... Things that are, you know, on my mind. And I thought, you know, it'd be good to tell you that. But, um, other things are, even though this past couple weeks I haven't been sleeping well, mentally I feel better in a way, I guess. I think it's because the surgery is done. And I don't have to think about that anymore. It's not a concern. It's, it's like that part is done. Let me move on to the next. Um, so, I feel good, but there are things. Now, okay, let me, I do want to say this. Other than the itching, <laughs> the other things are not on my mind constantly. They're not. It's just something that pops in my head every once in a while, every day. <laughs> but it's not constant. The itchy part is almost constant at times. <laughs> Because, you know, whenever you itch or something, it irritates you. Hopefully, I'm not making you guys itch from saying the word itch. <laughs> you know, a psychological mind game <laughs> that happens. It's not something I'm trying to do, but it happens whenever someone says something, you know, around me when they start, say certain words. Back to the yawning again. So sorry. Um, I have tried to take a nap during the day. I usually can't take a nap. I lay down and it just nothing happens. But laying down does help. Uh, so that's the, the, the negative parts, really. That's that's that part. I mean, I do have thoughts of what if this pain never goes away? Um why did I have a surgery if the pain is just going to still be there, you know, that kind of thing. I mean I got I had the surgery so it wouldn't herniate any worse, hopefully. Uh, there is a risk of it herniating again and me possibly having to have a fusion. And I have thought about asking my doctor why he didn't just do a fusion in the beginning. Because, of course, this is after the surgery. Jeff and I were talking. I, I guess he didn't think it was bad enough to have a fusion. First of all, yawning and throat fro frogs. I mean, <laughs> and can't talk. That's me today. Um, but... I guess he didn't think it was bad enough for a fusion. I guess that's why he didn't do it. I didn't ask him, but I thought about it. There is a risk of me having to have one, though. We still don't know why my spine is the way it is and why I have had so many issues with it. I've never been in an accident. I've never had any issues like anything happening where I should have to. Now when I was a child I was told that I had scoliosis but it I wasn't taken to the doctor to get further testing that I remember. I, I don't really know if that could be a factor in the whole situation. From what I was told it was very uh, low grade I guess. I don't know the proper wordage right this minute but it wasn't bad scoliosis. 
or anything. So I don't really know about that part. So I don't know if that could have something to do with it. I don't, I just don't know. There's a lot of I don't knows in this whole situation with my back. But I do know that as soon as my doctor releases me, I'm going to start doing things to try to strengthen my spine again. Um, I do feel like the last few months with me not being able to do certain things, my spine is weaker than it was. I feel, I feel like that's something that has happened because I couldn't physically do certain things. Now I'm just not allowed to, <laughs> which is fine. I'm not complaining. I hope you don't think I'm complaining, but, um, I couldn't physically do certain things. So I think that it weakened my back, but I don't know. I, I really don't know. I don't know if posture has something to do with it. I know when I sit in my desk chair, which is supposed to be ergonomically correct and it's supposed to be better for you and all this, I hurt worse. That's why I limit my time of sitting there. That's actually another reason why I've been doing two computers at one time to do my videos when I'm doing a bunch of videos at once. Um, so I have to sit there less time. I am getting up a lot more often than I used to and I plan to get another desk chair or some sort of different kind of chair once we move. Um, I would just like to maybe if possible get some sort of chair that swivels so that that's a comfortable chair that I don't have to um, have a regular desk chair anymore because every one I've ever had except one I had years ago that I wore out they've been uncomfortable the one I had years ago was a Serta I think it was or Broyhill I can't remember it's been forever it's probably been 20 years or more um I wore it out we wore it out because we all sat in it but yeah and back then, I don't know, it was even more comfortable than any I've ever had since. Um, but I would like to you like for you to know that I am happy that I had the surgery. I I am I'm glad that I had it done because it is a different kind of pain and part of the things have gone away. I don't have the fear of certain things. My back is not locking up which I can't do certain things that I used to do that whenever it would lock up but there are times whenever it would lock up and I would almost fall when I was just walking so my back is not locking up and like when I say that what I mean is like it seizes up and I can't I, I, I seriously almost fell down um, several times and thankfully I was near a wall or a human that could help me to not, that I could brace myself. Um, so that's not happening. The numbness and tingling and all of that is not happening. It's just a weird pain. And it's, I know in my heart that it's because, or in my mind, in my whatever, that it's because the nerve has to heal. I've had nerve damage before. I actually have nerve damage in my tongue. I know that sounds really weird, but years ago, I had a wisdom tooth removed and the nerve was wrapped around the root or something like that. And um, the dentist who did it didn't do things properly, I don't think. And half of my tongue on the left side, that half, was completely numb. Now I can feel, but it still has numbness. And this is 16, 17 years ago. No, longer than that. Probably, well, maybe. It's been a long time. And I still have numbness on that side that never goes away. I don't know if it ever will. I could have gone to a specialist, but there was no... Well, I did go to a specialist, but I could have had surgery. But there was no guarantee that it would fix it and it might make it worse. So, I chose to live with it the way it was. And gradually, it has gotten better. So, I, I know that nerves take time to heal. I think they take longer than most everything else. I know they definitely take longer than skin and muscle. 
and bone too, I guess. But yeah, I'm I'm doing good though. I'm in good spirits. I'm happy. I'm grateful. I know I'm truly blessed. And um, to even be able to do this, to have the surgery and have people take care of me is a blessing. Um, I'm definitely not complaining. Jeff and Noah are doing so many things that are my things. My problem is not that they're doing it, not how they're doing it or anything like that. It's just that you know, there's certain things that are yours, and when it's taken away, even if it's something someone else might hate, it, it causes mental things happening. Come on, please, camera, why? Wow. Are you really? I don't know what's happening with this thing. It did this before. Let me see if I can change another setting. Okay, let's try this again. It's getting on my nerves. I don't know why it's doing this. It has not done this in so long. But no, I don't want you to feel like I'm complaining because I definitely am not complaining. This is just something that I'm working through. And it'll be fine. And I'll be fine. Everything's going to be fine. I just have to get through the next four weeks. It's not causing me any kind of emotional problems or, you know, anything like that. But I'm bored. I really am bored. I never thought that sitting around reading and watching TV could be so boring. I love reading. Don't get me wrong. That's the one thing. I mean, I don't know. It's like I want to do something physical. I want to do something that moves my body. And the only thing I can do is walk. And I can take walks all day long. But it's it's still like, I don't know. But Jeff and Noah are doing a wonderful job. Absolutely fantastic job. I don't want you to think that I'm complaining about their stuff. Because I am not. There was a time when I actually needed help. <laughs> and I didn't have anybody helping. It was back years ago when the kids were younger and they were like rebellious and didn't want to do their chores and things. <laughs> you know, mommies go through that. Y'all all know. <laughs> Tell me a mama who didn't go through children not wanting to do their chores. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they did them, but they sometimes you had, they had to be reminded. <laughs> but yeah, there have been times in my life where that I feel like if I would have been going through this with the mentality that I had back then, I would have been happy about it, about not doing the things. Now I'm not. It's like my mentality, my perspective has changed. And since it has, those are my things, <laughs> if that makes sense. But I'm definitely not complaining absolutely not complaining. I don't want you to feel like I am. I'm very grateful for the help I've had. Um, and they're doing great. It's only four more weeks and then I can start hopefully doing my normal things. I have asked Jeff if our vacuum is too heavy and he said he wasn't sure and he didn't weigh it for me so I don't know. I don't think he wants me to vacuum yet. Um, it is very lightweight. And also, like, I don't want him to worry anymore. He is watching me like a hawk when he's at home. He is seriously watching everything I do. If I pick up something, if, I, if I'm not sitting still, he's watching what I'm doing. And, um, there's times when he scolded me. <laughs> And I'm like, dude, this is not that heavy. It's not as heavy as a milk jug. Dude, it's okay. I did, and There have been times where I bent over without thinking. Not many, but there's been a few. This happened more like when I was on the pain medicine. And the pain was a lot less. Which is another reason why I didn't want to take the pain medicine anymore. Because I was doing things that might have been stupid. Um... 
I didn't do it much. And my doctor said that was okay. He said, that's just a thing. You just do it. It's just, you don't need to do it constantly. And you know, if I worked outside of the home with certain jobs, I would be back in the workforce. So, um, I don't know. I just, I just wanted to talk to you guys a bit about this. Let you know how I'm thinking, how I'm feeling, what's going on in my brain. But I'm okay. I'm feeling really good, like, emotionally, mentally, and physically as well. It's just I'm still having that pain. So sometimes the little monster thoughts pop in and tell me things that I don't believe are true. Thankfully, I don't believe they're true. <laughs> if I believe they were true, I think they'd get me depressed or something. But I'm okay. I'm doing really well. Um, I am going to talk to Jeff about this. I talk to him about everything. I know some people think that's weird, but I talk to him about everything because I would like his opinion, even though he's never gone through it. He knows me. He's watched me at like a halt, like I said. Um, so he, you know, he knows me. So he would know what I would need to do to make me feel more comfortable or whatever about like taking the medication or calling the doctor or trying the medication and then calling the doctor if it doesn't do anything or what because I do need my sleep. Sleep is very important. But I have rambled and jumbled and tried to make you guys um, understand that I'm fine. I'm just having a little bit of crazy feel in here sometimes that I'm fighting and I'm doing good. Four more weeks of this. And I go back to my doctor and I'm praying he releases me to at least do some of my stuff. Because I am bored out my gourd. I am bored. I think that's one of the major issues. Because normally every day I have my routine. I'm up doing things. And then, you know, if I want to veg out and read a book or watch TV, it doesn't bother me at all. But right now I have too much TV time. Too much reading time, and I don't like it, but I have been given back the gift of being able to cook, and um, I've been doing that with help. You see the help that I have. You see he's in there. <laughs> he's not going to let me do it alone. So, yeah, I'm good, though. I'm really good, and I want to thank you all for all the prayers. I know they have worked wonders. I know that God has heard every one of them. And I want to thank you for all the comments and all the love and all the reassurance and all the the building me up and helping me on the bad days. You don't know how many times that I have read a comment and it made me laugh or it made me just feel good. You know, I, I just, I appreciate it so much. And I'm, I'm just, I'm so happy that the, the harder part is over. And now I'm going through the easier part, even though it's a part that I thought I had, I was ready for. <laughs> but maybe I'm, I think it's because of my routines being interrupted, honestly. I think that's the biggest problem. But I think that I'm going to start decluttering small areas that I can, like not lifting anything. Like maybe get a box or a bag or something that I can lift when it's empty. And going to areas and putting things that I do not want, that we do not need, that we do not desire to have in our home anymore. I think I'm going to start decluttering and I think that will help me to have something to do. <laughs> so if I do that, I think it will help me. But I didn't feel... Like, up till now, I didn't feel like I should yet. One reason was Jeff told me to leave it alone. But now that we're halfway through, I think he'll... That's something else I'm going to talk to him about. I think he'd be okay with it. I know certain things he wouldn't care at all. Because I need to go through where my vanity is right here. I need to go through stuff there because there's old makeup and stuff that needs to just go. Um, 
I need to start wearing makeup again. I have said over and over again that I was. I have said that I was going to start doing my hair and wearing my makeup and all that stuff. And I haven't done it. One reason why I haven't done it recently is because when I do my hair, I have to flip my head over and stuff. To And I can't bend over. So I haven't really done much with it. Even after I got it cut, I didn't really do much with it. I still haven't. I did like that one day that I had a messy bun that was really cute. I might do that. I didn't have to bend over anything for that, though. But I really need to go through that. Um, yeah, so that's something I can do that everything is lightweight because <laughs> makeup is not heavy. I mean, you can cake it on and look heavy. <laughs> Let's just stop. Okay. So I think I want to start doing some things like that and just declutter things and then leave the box where it's at and let Jeff move it to wherever. If it's trash, if it's too heavy, let him or Noah take it away and they don't have, I'm going to talk to Jeff about it. If he's okay with that, I might start doing that. But um, I know he won't say anything about my makeup stuff because he's not going to be the one that goes through it. But I want to declutter and downsize. Because we have too much stuff. The only place that I really, really, really don't want to do is the kitchen because I love so many things in there. But there's some things I know we do not need. I know we don't. I don't use them. I can pass them on to someone else that can use them. Um, and I believe our kitchen is going to have less space once we move. I don't know. We're going to see. But I know that there are, well, there's some dishes I know I won't have a problem getting rid of, like coffee mugs and stuff that we don't ever use. I don't use mugs. I use, there's one teacup that I have that I will not part with. And it has its saucer and all this stuff. Um, I will keep that because I drink my green tea in it. But I don't really use mugs and nobody else does. There are a couple that I will keep. Because one of them's Noah's and one of them's Selena's. And um, I'm keeping those. But in other words, there's no sentimental value. Um, so yeah. I'm going to hush now. This has been a long video of me sitting here talking and getting fuzzy. And stuff like that. So I will talk to y'all later. Please do not take this video as complaining. I definitely am not. Absolutely not. I just want you to be aware of my thoughts right now. Things that are going on. that Some little battles I'm fighting. But everything is really going well. Um, I know that the pain is from the nerve healing. And um, I'm going to be alright. Either way, I'm going to be okay. Because even if this pain like stays and we find out there's another issue that needs to be fixed, I have good doctors. Do I want that to happen? No. Do I want to have to have another spine surgery? Absolutely never, ever, ever again in my life. It's so scary, y'all. Never again. Now, this one was not as scary because it was minimally invasive and it, my spinal cord was not involved. But it's still scary. Being put, in, put under with anesthesia, that, that's scary for anybody. So... I don't know. That's just some of my thoughts. Hopefully, I did not drive you nuts. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. I hope that this maybe helps you, if nothing else. Maybe it helps you understand my brain a little bit. Um, maybe if you've gone through it and you've had some of the same thoughts and you've gone through it and um, come out on the other side, you can encourage me a little. I, I'm, I feel fine, though. It's like... I don't let those thoughts get me down. I don't let them stay. They can't live there. They don't, they can, they're not taking up residence. They might come through and visit, but I kick them out real quick. <laughs> you know, they're like that, the traveling salesman that you don't want at your door. <laughs> they're like, bye. <laughs> that kind of thing. I am in good spirits, though. I'm very good spirits and happy that I have been giving back some of my things that I enjoy. Because I definitely enjoy taking care of my family. And I know that some people 
might find homemaking very boring but I do not <laughs> I find it very enjoyable and I wish that I had this mentality from the beginning because if I had I would have seen what a gift it is to take care of my loved ones I wouldn't have been seeing it in a negative way ever I have talked to you guys about that perspective thing before so if you want to know what I'm talking about let me know and I will either tell you in the comments or I will do another video or talk about it in a video or something like that but I'll see you next time thank you so much for hanging out with me today I do appreciate it if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button if you like my channel go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so be notified whenever I upload it's absolutely free YouTube TV does cost something but this is not the same thing so if you subscribe, you are not subscribing to YouTube TV. You are just subscribing to my channel so you can see my craziness. If you think someone else would enjoy my craziness, and I don't mean that in a negative way at all. I think craziness sometimes can be fun crazy, you know. Um, I'm just a little bit of different. <laughs> but I'm finding that there's a lot of people like me out there that are a little bit of different too. So... If you know somebody who is a little bit different and would enjoy watching, go ahead and share this. Most importantly, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're doing. And remember, don't take any wooden nickels and be sweet.